before then there'd been no indication that there was anything wrong at all. So this all hit like a ton of bricks. It, it just came out of nowhere. Even though he couldn't come home, we could go visit him. And um, I have I said, a five-year-old daughter and she could go, she couldn't really visit him in hospital, but at the hospice there were playrooms, there were toys to play with. When daddy was tired we could just take her out to the room next door. He could go out into the garden with her and they, we got some little crazy golf set and he could sort of swing a plastic golf club. So she felt like he was playing with her and he was, he had time with her and for me I could, you know, I could stay. I could, for the last three weeks he was alive, I went home for two nights in that time and all the rest of the time I had a bed in his room and the guys would bring me breakfast when they brought him breakfast. I was made to feel not like a visitor but like somebody who belonged there and who was, was part of the family. It was nice that Lissy could go and use the playrooms. It was nice that I could go and sit in the lounge when he was having a sleep. It was nice that we had the bistro and the good food. Um, and, and the garden was lovely. And it was nice for him to have, you know, sort of to be able to see that, especially when he couldn't get outside. But the most important thing was that private space. Having a room that was big enough for me to stay for Lissy to play in, so we could be chatting in bed, you know, he could be in bed chatting and we could have half a dozen guests in. We had his cousins over from Ireland and there was his cousin with their two kids, plus his mum and dad, plus me and my mum and dad and my daughter. And we could all fit in there and we could close the door and not worry about being disruptive and um, we could it, we had space to be together um, and him having his own bathroom meant that he got to do his own personal care for a lot longer than he would have otherwise if he'd been having to walk down the corridor to a bathroom or if he'd been having to um, to try and try and use shared facilities he wouldn't have had the confidence to keep going and keep pushing himself to do his own personal care for as long as he did. And that gave him a sense of trying. It made him feel like he hadn't given up and and let him let him be him for that bit longer. Even with the illness, he could still be himself for just those extra few weeks. He had a, a comfort in knowing that despite what was happening to him, uh, there were people who were, who were there, who were taking care of him, who were the right people, the experts, and yet on demand. On Mother's Day, um, he, he was, too ill and too dopey to think to do anything and I was a bit gutted because I thought well, this is the last Mother's Day where you do something for me um, and and he just didn't think about it um, and I'd got a bit upset um, anyway Lissy had gone off with with the nurses and um, I'd sort of he'd had a sleep and I just had a a bit of time away, I'm pulling myself together, like, you know, suck it up, it's fine. And I came back and they brought this bunch of flowers and they'd helped Lissy make a card for me. And I mean, I just wept. It was just, it was just the, the most thoughtful thing because he hadn't been able to do it. And I'd got irrationally upset about it and they just, they did that and it, and it made it, you know, it made, it made it special. 
she actually said to me the other night, she said, um, Daddy liked living at the hospice, didn't he, Mummy? Because she's very young and she doesn't remember a lot. She was she was only four when he died. Mm -hmm. And she, she gets some of her stories muddled up, but she remembers playing games with Daddy in bed at the hospice. And she remembers playing dollies with Daddy at the hospice. And she remembers um, lots of things from that time. Being in the hospice, the care was done and we could just be a family together and we could just do things as a family and have that have that last bit of time that we had there's lots of minutes where it's just time and you, they just go and you don't notice them but then there's certain minutes and certain hours that you would pay a hundred times that for those minutes Mike's last hour and having Debbie one of the one of the healthcare assistants sat with us in the room for that hour um, as he as he left us she sat quietly in the corner and she didn't intrude she didn't say anything she was just there I could hold his hand and I could talk to him and all I had to do was focus on on his last last hour and his last minutes and she was there ready to step in when the time came there were a lot of those minutes a lot of those minutes just those little tiny things I just, I saw a photo on the Facebook page um, and there's a group of the nurses there um, and the photo and well, nurse, nurses and healthcare assistants and um, Julie, the, uh, uh, the housekeeping manager and I thought it's, it's five months later and I can name every one of those women and I can name ten things that every one of them have done, ten different things for every person that they did, something that stood out for all of them. There's just, it's not an experience I would ever choose to have having to have that experience I couldn't have chosen a better place to have it yeah. just, uh, just thank you to thank you to everybody <laughs>